Alright, welcome back to my channel. This is Doc Janelle. The subject at hand is community and public health and this is the third discussion that we will have. For today's lesson, we will be talking about the World Health Organization and the Sustainable Development Goals. If you're ready, then let's start. First, I would love for everybody to have an understanding of how the healthcare delivery system works. No, When we say healthcare delivery system, this is an organization of people institution and resources whose goal is to meet the health needs of a target population by providing them with healthcare services and there are different types of healthcare delivery systems first governmental so this is usually a a system that is part of the government structure whether it be federal state democratic tribal territorial or local they are usually funded by taxes of the people and they usually have a, an authority over some geographic area and um, WHO and the DOH are some examples of governmental healthcare delivery organizations. The second group is quasi-governmental. This refers to organizations that have some official health responsibilities but operate in part like a voluntary health organization again they have an official health responsibility but they function um, as a voluntary organization one good example of a quasi-governmental healthcare organization is the red cross so the government actually um, acknowledges the red cross as the official blood donation group of the the country but uh, they are not part of the government. Instead, they function as a voluntary group. And lastly, of course, we have the non-governmental. These are the private enterprises which also provide health care to our people. So um, some examples include your St. Luke's, MaxiCare, the Medical City, and Makati Med. Makati Med. So now let's go to the World Health Organization. The WHO is the most widely recognized international governmental health organization today. Although the WHO is the largest international health organization, it is not the oldest. So there are many other global organizations which have um, were established prior to WHO, but it was WHO who stood the test of time. The headquarters of the World Health Organization is at Geneva, Switzerland, and there are six regional offices around the world. This includes the African region, whose office is at Congo, the American region, whose office is at the Washington, D.C., the Eastern Mediterranean region, where the office is located at Cairo, Egypt, the European region at Copenhagen, Denmark, the Southeast Asian region, office at New Delhi, India, and the Western Pacific region, whose office is at Manila, Philippines, headed by Dr. Takeshi Kasai. Please do remember that. So, in the country, we do have a WHO regional office here, uh, named as Western Pacific Regional Office. So, actually, there are a lot of job opportunities available for Filipinos since the regional office is located here in Manila. Um, and please do remember that the head of the Western Pacific Regional Office is Dr. Takeshi Kasai. Going further, the World Health Organization is actually a specialized agency under the United Nations. No? And the role of the, of the WHO is to provide technical cooperation, to carry out programs, mainly focus on controlling and eradicating disease, and to strive to improve the quality of human life. The ultimate goal of the WHO is to provide people with the highest possible level of health. I want you to take note of this, that they do not promise the best. Instead, they promise or their goal is to provide people with whatever is the highest possible level of health that their country and the WHO can provide for the certain group of population. It is financed by its member nations, meaning each member state is assessed according to its ability to pay. So wealthier countries or richer countries actually pay more to be a part of the WHO, while poorer countries or developing countries have to pay less. 
Lastly, please do remember that the current Director General of the World Health Organization is Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. Please take note of the spelling because this will come out during your examination. So the WHO actually has six core functions. You need not memorize the following, but you have to be familiar with them just in case a, an essay question or a true or false question comes out in the exam. First, they provide leadership on matters critical to health and they engage in partnerships when needed. So one good example of this was during the COVID-19 um, pandemic, during the beginning of COVID-19, it was the WHO who, number one, announced that it was already a global pandemic. Number two, they provided guidelines on how each country should respond to the announcement. And number three, they made partnerships as needed no, in order to provide vaccines and um, medicines needed to each country. Number two, they shape the research agenda and they stimulate the generation, translation, and dissemination of valuable knowledge. Actually, when you go to the website of WHO, you will be able to find a lot no, of um, public information and public health teaching in, um, materials in many different languages. So they really study about each disease. They try to create a public health education material. And they make it available in whatever language um, it will be deemed needed. So there are many public health education materials there in Tagalog. No? Number three, they set the norms and standards. And not only that, but they also promote and monitor the implementation of the standards that they actually promulgate. So another example of that was during COVID-19 when they said that the quarantine should be 14 days. They made sure that each country would actually obey and follow the guidelines provided by the WHO. Number four, articulating ethical and evidence-based policy options. So not only is the WHO scientific, but they are also ethical in the um, promulgations that they produce. So they make sure that it is evidence-based, it has been well-researched, and it applies to the ethical standards of each nation. Number five, they provide technical support. Uh, they catalyze change and they build sustainable institutional capacity. Meaning not only do they provide information, but they also provide the equipment, the machinery in order to make or in order to make the the, the protocol uh, as possible, no possible to be obeyed, possible so that people can and the government can actually implement the the policy options. And number six, they monitor the health situations and assess the health trends, um, whether it be for rich countries or for developing countries. So here are some of the proof that the WHO actually has been active in um, providing or in functioning in the six core functions that we just mentioned. So the WHO Philippines donated COVID-19 data processing and encoding equipment to the DOH BOQ. So again, when the WHO promulgated that all data, all patients, death, and um, PUI, PUM should be recorded, they did not only propose that, but they also provided equipment in order for each country to actually be able to do it. The DOH also received WHO donations of PTEs and medical devices. And in 2019, during the measles epidemic in the country, the DOH, WHO, and UNICEF actually started a nationwide campaign in order to curb the number of rising cases of measles. There are other international health agencies who also aid the Philippines, whether it be financially or through manpower. No? This includes the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, also known as UNHCR, and their goal is to save lives, protect the rights, and to build a better future specifically for refugees. So you might still remember when Syria had a, an internal turmoil in their country and people started fleeing from Syria and we had a lot of Syrian refugees fleeing to many countries. Um, UNHCR were actually the prime movers to make sure that these refugees are received in countries who welcomes them and are well taken care of. Second is the United Nations Children's Fund, also known as UNICEF. Um, they have a former name, 
which is United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. But later on, they dropped the words international and emergency and stuck with um, the new name. But then the acronym remained the same. The goal of UNICEF is to save the lives of children, defend their rights, and also to make sure that they reach their full potential. Next, we have the United Nations Population Fund or UNFPA. And this is the United Nations Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency, making sure that every pregnancy is wanted, every childbirth is safe, and every young person's potential is fulfilled. More international agencies include the USAID or US Agency for International Development, who provide financial and humanitarian efforts, especially um, for developing countries. We also have the International Medical Corps, or IMC, who deliver emergency medical services to those afflicted, especially by disaster and a pandemic such as this. And lastly, we have the International Rescue Committee, which is the humanitarian aid for disasters. Other countries also provide aid to developing nations, such as the GIS, or the German Agency for International Cooperation. We also have SAIDA, or Canadian International Development Agency, the JICA, the Japanese International Cooperation Agency, and the ACID, which is the Spanish Agency for International Development Cooperation. Now we will be talking about the United Nations programs that they have implemented in the past and are being implemented currently. In June 1992, they held a meeting at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and the meeting was called Earth Summit. 178 heads of countries attended the meeting, and there they adopted the Agenda 21. Agenda 21 was a comprehensive plan of action to build a global partnership for sustainable development to improve human lives and protect the environment. So basically, all the presidents, all the heads of states agreed that there are certain um, goals that they should set as a nation. And these goals focused on improving the quality of life and protecting environment. So there they, they made goals to battle climate change, global warming, to improve human rights, to improve hunger, etc. However, Agenda 21 was very broad and very generalized. Another important thing about Agenda 21 was there was no end time. No, um, They were not able to project how long the project will be. And... Um, how they will be able to measure if the, they have already achieved the goals. And so in September 2000, they again met at the United Nations New York headquarters and they called the meeting Millennial Summit. It was attended by 189 countries and there they, they drafted and adopted the Millennium Development Goals. There are eight Millennium Development Goals whose efforts uh, aims to meet the needs of the world's poorest. So please do remember that MDGs, aim to help only the developing nations, only the world's poorest. And they want to um, reduce the statistics by half, by at least half, all by the date 2015. So I want to show you first the eight Millennium Development Goals set by the United Nations. And yes, you do have to memorize the following. So the MDGs formed a blueprint agreed upon by all the world's countries and all the world's leading development institutions. And for 15 years, the effort of the United Nations, the WHO, and even each local government no, really paid off because when you look at the statistics um, from 2000 to 2015, they were, there were really positive improvements. But of course, with continuous technological advancements, rapid urbanization, there came also a lot of other problems. In June 2012, they again met at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, in a meeting called Rio Plus 20 Conference, and the member states produced a document called The Future We Want. In this document, they developed a process for a new set of sustainable development goals, which will carry on the momentum generated by the previously set Millennium Development Goals. The goal of the new set of SDGs was to fit into a global development framework beyond 2015. This is very monumental because 
the times were already different. 2012 was already so much different from the year 2000 when they drafted the MDG. And so even before the MDG goals were finally assessed, no, they already set a plan to widen the scope of the United Nations goals and to include as much minority and uh, as much issues that they can um, that they can handle, that they can actually address um, to the list that they have. And so in January 2015, they started to draft the new set of goals. So a policy shaping was done, and it was not only done by the heads of states, but they included civil society organizations, citizens, scientists, academe, and even the private sector. And eventually after all the meetings, all the drafting, they were able to produce 17 sustainable development goals with again a 15-year time frame. And so, when they met again in September 2015 at the UN New York headquarters in a meeting called UN Sustainable Development Summit attended by 193 countries, they adopted the new 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. So what is this new goal about? What is this new program about? This included a plan of action for the environment, the economy, and social progress. These three things are very important because these three things were overlooked during the MDG. And now they really wanted to highlight it. They want to focus on really improving the environment. So later on, you will see... Um, the, the new SDGs now included care of the waters, care of the land. No? They also included economic and social progress in the new set of SDGs. So the goal of the 2030 Agenda included targets and objectives which will stimulate action for the next 15 years from 2015 until 2030. It, this included again the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, now associated with 169 targets. And if the MDG focus on developing countries, on poor people, now the SDGs, uh, the, the motto of the SDG is to leave no one behind. It's now more inclusive, whether you are a rich country, or a, a mid-class country, or a poor country, you must achieve your Sustainable Development Goals. Again, in the MDG, the focus was to reduce by half all statistics, poverty, maternal health, um, pollution. No? The, the, the statistics were only to reduce them by half. But the SDG, their goal was to achieve zero statistics on all targets. So I want to show you the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And yes, you do have to memorize all 17. And not only that, but you also have to memorize their... Um, corresponding number. So number one is no poverty, number two is zero hunger, and so on. And you must not mix them up. So I've already discussed some differences between the MDGs and SDGs, but I still want to show you this image in order for us to better appreciate you know, why the need to um, set another goal, why the need to change from MDG to SDG, why, did not, why don't just we um, extend the deadline of the MDGs, no? So again, MDGs focus only on the poor, on developing countries. But the SDGs was more inclusive. It included uh, the entire globe, whether it be domestic and international, no? Second, from eight MDGs, we now have 17 SDGs with 169 targets. The level of disaggregation for MDGs is also on a national level while the SDGs is again more inclusive, okay? And lastly, for the financing, initially for the MDGs, it, it should have been bilateral, meaning there should be a local fund allocated for it, and the WHO will also provide international aid to the developing countries. But apparently, it did not materialize. So now they move to a domestic and local resources, meaning... When they, uh, when they organize a project, this project should be able to sustain the next project that will be coming. So they also included um, financial sources and models to provide economic development in each nation so that they can provide funds to really attain their SDGs. So now we will discuss one by one each sustainable development goal and I'll brush up on the updates from last year. 
So first, the long name of um, SDG number one is to end poverty in all its forms everywhere. But for the sake of our discussion and for the sake of the examination, I will just require you to memorize the shorter name, okay? So end poverty. According to the latest uh, update from 2021, COVID-19 has led to the first rise in extreme poverty in a generation. So more people have gone below the poverty line. In fact, the goal of the SDG is zero statistics by 2030, but this early on, it's only 2022, they have already projected the global poverty rate to be at around 7% by 2030. Second, to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition, including sustainable agriculture. So because of the global pandemic, more people has also been in hunger. And according to projections, the pandemic will continue to worsen child malnutrition all over the world. Number three is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. If there's any out of the seventeen, no, out of the out of the seventeen SDGs, if there's any one that is very important for us, it is SDG number three. Please do remember that, because this talks about healthcare, this talks about healthcare workers, this talks about um, the very things, no, that we want to achieve, like universal healthcare, and 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 the like. So the pandemic has halted, and not only halted or stopped, but even. Uh, even produce reversed progress in all our efforts to improve healthcare. And moreover, the pandemic has shortened the life expectancy of people. Okay? So, there has been a, a decade of progress in reproductive health, in maternal health, and in child health, all were put to waste because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Number four, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong opportunities for all. According to the latest update, COVID-19 has wiped out 20 years of efforts in improving the educational system. Even the Philippines, no, we built a lot of classrooms. Um, there was a lot of effort to make sure that children, especially those living in the rural areas, are, are provided free education, however, because of COVID-19, again, it has wiped out 20 years of educational gains. Number five, to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Number six, ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. You know what? Water sanitation and the, pot the potability of water has always been a problem all over the world, whether it be in the Philippines or in other countries. From time immemorial, people have been advocating for all of the world to have potable water. However, it's already 2022 and potable water is still one of our problems. Number seven, to ensure access to affordable, reliable, and sustainable and modern energy for all. Actually, in, even in the country, there are the, a lot of provinces, areas are experiencing a lot of black blackouts and brownouts. So this is really this could be an impending problem for the rest of the country if not addressed. Number eight, promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth full and productive employment and decent work for all. However, because of the pandemic, more than 255 million people have lost their full-time jobs. And because of this, the world has um, gone into a global financial crisis. Number nine, to build resilient infrastructure, promote sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. Number 10, to reduce inequality within and among countries. This is actually a very good goal no? in, in, introduced by the United Nations. We know that in the Philippines, healthcare workers are paid lower how, compared to healthcare workers working probably in Canada or in the UK or even in the Middle East. So this goal wants to equalize that. It wants to provide people whatever nation you may be free you may be from with an equal opportunity 
No? However, again, because of the pandemic, it has caused reverse progress in providing equality, equal opportunities, equal income for everybody. Number 11, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. However, the pandemic has worsened the plight of slum dwellers. In fact, majority of more than 1 billion slum dwellers are recorded. Number 12, to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. So this is putting electronic waste um, or disposal of electronic waste properly. It is about um, our way of um, using fossil fuels. No, And you know what? The Philippines is um, performing very well in SDG number 12. Number 13 is to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. Number 14, it's about life underwater, so the sustainable use and improvement of marine resources. Number 15 is about our land. It's about providing sustainable terrestrial ecosystems. It's about combating deforestation, desertification, land degradation, and biodiversity loss. Number 16 is about human rights and justice. Promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, access to justice, and inclusive institutions accountable at all levels. And lastly, to strengthen the means of implementation and to revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. So this is the global cooperation. No? So now let's take a look at the top performing and worst performing nations in terms of their sustainable development goals. Which countries have already attained their SDGs and which countries are very, very far from the goal. So the top country, number one, is Finland with a score of 85.9, followed by the following countries you see on your screen. Sweden, Denmark, Germany, Belgium, Austria, and alike. Usually, European countries perform well in their SDGs. The poorest performing countries include the following, but the worst is Central African Republic with a score of only 38.3. Uh, followed by South Sudan, Chad, Somalia, Liberia, Nigeria. So usually, again, these are African countries. So where is the Philippines in terms of ranking? We are ranked 103 out of 165 countries with an average score of 64.5 tied with Cambodia. Look at the other countries in our bra in your bra bracket. Sorry, We have Bahrain, Myanmar, Belize. Iraq, Mongolia, South Africa, Trinidad, and Tobago. Now I want to look at Finland. Why are they ranked number one? What SDGs do they still lack? Let's see. So this is Finland, ranked one out of 465, average score of 85.9, and this sphere right here is very helpful. Once the blue color reaches the outer part, it means it's performing well. So SDG number one, poverty. It seems like there's no poverty in Finland, no? Sana all. In fact, here, no, they are colored green, meaning they've already attained no poverty. So in Finland, nobody is living below the poverty line. They're also well performing in SDG number four, which is quality education. In number seven, also, no? Taas din sila. However, look, they are poorly performing in climate change and responsible production and consumption. How about the Philippines? Philippines is ranked 103 and an average score of 64.5. By looking at the sphere, it seems like we are best performing in SDG number 13, followed by SDG number 12. No, Number 13 is climate action. Number 12 is responsible consumption. And we are also performing well in number four, which is quality education. Our lowest include number 10, which is reduced inequalities. Baba talaga ng pasahod, no? Number nine, which is industry innovation, infrastructures. 
Number 15, mababa rin tayo, life on land. And number 3, healthcare. Once we look at the better image, we have only achieved one out of the 17 SDGs and that is responsible consumption and um, production. Pero may mga yellow na rin tayo, meaning there are still challenges but we are improving well in education and even in climate action. However, we still have a lot of reds. No major challenges in hunger, in healthcare, in economy, life underwater, terrestrial, our land, in even in human in human rights and justice. So, What's the bottom line of this discussion? Bottom line, the WHO should be a lighthouse in an ocean of problems. And uh, to be frank, they have really been um, exerting a lot of effort to provide assistance, guidance, especially in this time of pandemic. And the Philippines, on the other hand, has been on the receiving end of all this international aid. Although these countries and these organizations are very much generous, and it seems like the aid will not stop in the coming years, we should not solely rely on these donations. In fact, political agendas should have no place in the pursuit of attainment ng mga SDGs natin. Also, it's very clear that we are not alone in the fight against poverty, in the fight against hunger, inequality, etc. And the Philippines, although we may be far from the goal, is slowly making progress. And just like any other country, we have our strengths and weaknesses. In fact, kung ano yung red kay Finland, yun yung green sa atin. Diba? So maybe we can teach Finland on how they can improve or achieve that SDG and maybe Finland can do us a favor as well. And we need more people who care and, re and we need to remove apathy amongst people. You know what apathy is? Apathy is kawalang pakialam. No? A lot of people in the nation wala nang pakialam in improving our global health. But as healthcare workers, that should not be the case. So, I'm sure you're thinking, wait, I'm a medical technologist. What is my role in all of this? I'm not planning to work in the WHO. I'm not planning to pursue community health or public health in the future. So, what is my role in all of this? You know, we need more healthcare workers who will not only work in the hospitals, laboratories, just to thrive and survive and earn money. We need healthcare workers who are visionaries, who are not ignorant to the needs of the nation and especially to the needs of the world. We need healthcare workers who will contribute to the improvement of the healthcare system. And you know what? You may not be the richest person out there. You may not have the highest position out there. But we should use whatever resource that we have in order to at least contribute to the achievement of our SDGs. And how can we do that? By educating, informing, raising awareness, and involving the public in this battle to reach our SDGs. You can use your social medias, your Twitter accounts, instead of using them to complain and to rant, why don't we use them to actually rally and gather our people? No, We can also implement sustainable projects and activities, even within our small communities. It does not have to be a big project right away, but we can do anything, our small efforts, to alleviate the burden. Lastly, if you do not want or if you do not know how to educate people or how to create projects, then maybe you can instead give financially or maybe volunteer and even promote causes that you strongly believe in. And uh, finally, to put an end to all of this, if you feel this burden inside of you right now to really do something to impact the world and impact the nation, then maybe you should pursue a master's degree in public health. So that's the end of our discussion. Hopefully you learned something. Um, study well for our exams. All right. Thank you and shalom.